الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله We've discussed this on countless occasions, the haq of a Muslim, the right of the believers upon one another. This is a very important thing that we have to realize and stress this point, stress the right of the believer because the Prophet uh, stressed the rights of the believer upon one another. And more importantly than that, than that is Allah Azza wa Jal, fi kitab al kareem has revealed to the Prophet ﷺ that the right of the believer, that the believers are brothers. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Verily, the believers are brothers. We're brothers to one another. We're tied together by faith. We're not tied together by tribe. We're not tied together by race. Although we have those links as well, so never underestimate the fact that yes, a person has a tribe. Yes, people from Peshawar are Peshawar. People are from Kashmir, they have their Kashmiri origin in the different tribes and, and, and linguistic differences. People from various uh, parts of the continent of Africa have links, uh, or, or uh, the various countries have a multitude of languages and cultures that are rich. And we don't belittle or underestimate those facts. African Americans, we have our own culture and our own unique history. And we don't belittle that fact. But the true brotherhood that doesn't mean that that is totally erased but what it means is that the true brotherhood the true the brotherhood of iman is that which is lasting the brotherhood of iman is that which really counts which is the real relevant brotherhood the brotherhood that allah azza wa jal the creator of the heavens and earth who created us in nations and tribes so that we would know one another and the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us and said that the best from amongst us is those who have taqwa, who have the most taqwa. And may Allah bless us to be of ahla uh, tuqa wa ahla taqwa. Coming back to the right of the Muslim, over the Muslim. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal حق المسلم على مسلم خمس رد السلام وعادة المريض واتباع الجنائز وإجابة الدعوة وتشميت العتش متفق عليه. This hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith of Abi Huraira, Amir al-Mu'minin, a hadith. رضي الله تعالى عن. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah, or he said the messenger. Uh, he reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said. The right of the Muslim over the Muslim is five. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned six. But in this hadith, he mentioned five. Haq al-Muslim ala Muslim, khams, five. Radd salam the first being return in the salam. Very important, ahabit fillah. Return the salams for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you, bara'at uh, al that you have freed yourself from any responsibility or sin with regard to that. If another Muslim gives you salams, then return the salams. It's very easy, it's very simple. Now, of course, there's those furur, or those, there's those issues which are not from, uh, there are those circumstances which are the exception to the rule, meaning if someone is from Ahla Bid'a, was and you find maslaha sharia and making hajr from them then in this case there it can be legislated for the person to not return the salams but the general the asl is that you give salams to every muslim everyone who believes and says ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah they have this haq over you so if they give you salams don't start with suspicion cuz then you are in sin if you are to such an extent, you're, you're afraid of giving salams to people, then you've went beyond the bounds. You're always safer by giving salams, whoever gives you salams, and then if you find out later this is a person from Ahl Bid'ah and there's Maslaha, there's benefit in giving them Hajar because we see that they're going to maybe come back 
and leave the bid'ah, or you're afraid of, uh, you know, of mixing with them, whatever the case may be, then in those situations, there are those exceptions. The second haq or right that uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he said, رَدَ السَّلَامُ يَعَدَةَ الْمَرِيدِ He said, and the second uh, right is to uh, visit the sick. So if you're sick, brother or sister, you hear of a brother uh, in the hospital. And, of course, we don't advise the sisters to go visit brothers in the hospital or vice versa unless under circum, uh, particular circumstances, which is not the time to uh, think. But, for example, if there's a sister in the hospital, we find out, and there, she has no Muslim relatives, she has no one looking out for her, and... So the imam or an imam and a brother or whatever the case may be, go to visit the sister because she has that haq. We have to see about her condition. No one else is there. I'm talking about if there's no females, no sisters who are available to do this, then she uh, has that right over the believers. The third right the Prophet ﷺ mentioned is following the janazah of, of the believer. So all the believers, they have this right to this janazah and one of the the, the uh, from the usul as is mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu is to follow and uh, to assist with the janazah to assist and follow the burial of your brother and of course on the Muslim community it's fard al-kifaya it is an obligation that somebody from the community must fulfill in order to bury the Muslim so that is an obligation this is also an obligation because the Prophet Sallallahu said haq al-muslim ala muslim that this is the right of the Muslim, meaning if you leave this, it, these are sins. So if you don't give salams to someone who has the right to your salam, you're a sin. That's why it's better and safer for you to give salams. I don't care if he's from Jamaat al I don't care if he's a Sufi, I don't care what. His, uh, the asl is he's a Muslim and you give him salams. That's the asl. But if you find, like I said, if there is maslaha, if there is benefit, again, you have to look at the maslaha of the shari', shari not of your own hawa, not of your jama'ah, not the maslaha hizbiya, but the maslaha shari'iya. Wittiba'i janaya, so following the janazah. Uh, the fourth right, the Prophet sallallahu rabbi wa salamu alayhi mentioned, wa ijabat dawa And if you are invited, it is to go to the, uh, to the, uh, to the invitation. So if you're invited to in, uh, to, to some gathering, which is halal, to someone's, eat someone's, uh, at, at dinner at someone's home, the walima, the wedding party, the akika, the, uh, for, for a new child, a new child, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the celebration for the, the new, newborn, whatever the case may be. As long as it's halal, it's a halal environment, you should give that right. That is a haq they have over you. So you do not want to uh, fail in this obligation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. With tishmit al-atish. This is something, ahabat al that some of us, most, most of the time I find that most Muslims, they're very aware of this. But sometimes, some of our brothers and sisters, and especially younger generations and people who are not uh, as grounded in some of the aspects of the deen, they might fail in this. They might fail to say Alhamdulillah when they sneeze. And Tashmit al Atish, this means to return by saying Yarhamakallah. Saying, May Allah have mercy upon you. So the person who sneezes says Alhamdulillah. Hachu, Alhamdulillah. And the Tashmit al Atish is the one who returns this. Uh, this uh, for this salam, for this uh, sneezing, that they say, Yarhamakullah, may Allah have mercy, for, mercy on you. And when you reflect upon it, Ahabatitullah, and I reflect on this more and more as, a, as I get older, and when I'm also in a non Muslim environment, you really begin to, to see, uh, and you know, a non Muslim sneezes and so forth, sometimes you feel bewildered about what to say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Because in the culture that many of us were brought up in, especially if you have a Christian background, 
then you would say, uh, uh, may Allah bless you, or um, bless you. They say bless you. So that's like saying barakah. So it made me reflect how similar that is to the Muslim way in the sense that we say, uh, you know, but the person says, Alhamdulillah, they, they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when they sneeze. Look at Islam, is built around Tawheed, bent around glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. Secondly, the believer uh, also, the returning, the Tashmit al Atas, is the one who, uh, you know, is when the person says, Yarhamakallah, may Allah have mercy upon you. So again, this is a supplication. For the one who's just sneezed. So it's a powerful thing. And again, it's a glorified glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, uh, you know, you're, it's like you're supplicating for that person that may Allah have mercy upon you. You're asking Allah to have mercy upon this person. So you see the, uh, the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tawheed implicit in everything in Islam. And like I said, that, that similarity that you find even amongst the Christians when they say, uh, you know, bless you, like this, when someone sneezes. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.